Let's get into some shite. All right, folks, welcome to Apocalyptic. You know, it seems like sometimes it just seems like forever in between the two shows, which is weird because I used to do a weekly and now I'm doing a bi-weekly and it just seems like it's forever. I don't know why I'm actually doing more shows, but I feel like I'm doing less. Anyway, how are you? How are you doing out there uh, on a uh, extremely messy December? Are you having a messy December? My, this December in, in, in Atlanta is horrible. We've had uh, nonstop rain for like a week. And I think more is coming. I believe I read that snow is coming. There's going to be like a snow NATO, snow NATO, right? That's like a new thing in uh, in contemporary times. Is you know when when I was a kid, we, like in in the spring you would have tornadoes, and in the winter you would have snow. Well, we're combining them now. We got snow NATOs, so you can actually have a tornado in the snow now. That used to be unheard of. I never heard of it, but it's a new thing in the um, in the the new uh, the not only the new economy, but the new what is it uh, ecology the the um, the weather, which grew and everything up. Global warming, I guess. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. What about you? Are you a scientist? Thank you for joining me, scientists. All of you apocalyptic scientists. It's, it's the last days, you know. These are the last days. Every th all bets are off. All rules are out the window. And we're just wandering around trying to figure out how to live in this life that we only have a few more weeks left in our lives, right? It seems like forever, but really, it's just a few more weeks. And you don't know that until you get toward the end. Because we all think, I don't know what we think. We think we're going to live until we're 90 and then we're going to sleep and die in our sleep. And we won't even know it. That's what we all think. I don't know. We None of us have a plan for death. None of us have a plan to die. We just, we keep putting it off. We don't think about it. Next week on the show, not next week, next Thursday, the next show, I have a guest. We're going to talk about death. I don't want to bum you out. I'm sorry. But we're going to talk about death, and uh, but it's not going to be that bad, really. The guest is going to be somebody that I really, really, really like. I really like her, and I want her on my show. And she's agreed to be on the show and talk about death with me. That's going to happen Thursday. It'll be fun, I think. Talking about death is fun. Sure, it should be. Why not? I had a, a mini panic attack today, a small, small uh, panic attack. It sounds dumb, but I was in bed and I suddenly realized that I have boxes of VHS tapes stored in my storage room and they're, I'm not using them. I don't, they've been in there, <laughs> I've had these tapes since I was in my 20s. That's 40, 40 years ago. I still have them. <laughs> These are things that I collected over time. I, I want to keep. I don't want to throw them away. TV shows, I guess I take. I don't, why do I have them? But you can't just go out and buy some of this stuff. So like back in, in my uh, 20s, early 20s, mid 20s, when I was... I wanted to be a stand-up comic, and I used to go to uh, comedy clubs, and I would study the comics, and I would watch HBO, and HBO, I don't know if it still is, but at the time, HBO was like this haven for stand-up comedy. They just, they really promoted it a lot, and you could see a lot of comics who now are old and retired or had TV shows and retired or whatever, like Seinfeld and Paul Reiser, the, these are, and Ellen DeGeneres, they, they, they had their own... TV specials, HBO specials. And I taped all of them. I would study them just like I was in school. 
And I've got tapes and tapes and tapes of these things. And most of them are probably, you probably can't even watch them. Well, I can't watch them now because I don't have a VHS player. Uh, it's easy to find one. Actually, I, th I think I do have one somewhere. But, but it just occurred to me this morning that I've got boxes. I think boxes. I've eliminated a few of them. Maybe I got two boxes, let's say. Two boxes full of VHS tapes with stuff on them. And this is not like one, this is not like something you go buy. It's not like one show. This is like something I made. So I packed it full of stuff. And I used to watch on New Year's Eve, man, because they, they would do like nonstop comedy on New Year's Eve. And I would tape them all. I got I got lots of them. And then I've got stuff just like, like with, my aunt was on the news one time and I taped that. We all do that, right? So I got my aunt, an interview. She's dead and gone, long time ago. But now I've got her on VHS, but I don't watch it. No one else is going to watch it. I don't have kids. I don't have anybody to leave these to. So what, what do I do? Do I just keep them in a box in my storage until I'm gone and then my wife has to do something? And what if there, what if I forgot and I put some porn on there and my wife is going to throw these away and she's like, well, I better watch them to make sure first that there's nothing on it that's valuable that we want to keep. And then she comes across the porn. She's like, wait a minute. He had this porn all the time. <laughs> I didn't tape a lot of porn. I'm not a porn guy. And I don't have, as far as I know, I don't have porn. I'd be watching it if I did, but I don't have any, I don't think. But there may be stuff on, I don't, nobody's going to want to see any of it. So do I go ahead and throw it away now? Or do I just keep it in there and let my wife throw it away when I'm gone? These are the things I just can't, I can't, I can't make decisions on these. And they'd wake me up in the morning. I woke up and I just suddenly thought, oh, wow. You know, I've got an interview with Bono from the Donahue show on VHS tape. I don't want to throw it away. I like Bono. I don't know what the hell's going on with Donahue now, but Bono still around a little bit. Don't want to throw it away. I might I haven't watched it in 40 years, but I might I might want to. I gotta throw stuff away. I'm kind of a collector. I do I do tend to collect things and and not like in a hoarder way. It's I collect things that I think I'm gonna need in the future, and then I don't. I just don't need them. So I um this week, uh so and, and I'm not gonna go into the details. I used to do a cartoon strip uh back in when my twenties, probably let's see, mid eighty-seven was when I started. It was for a music magazine. And um it, in that little subculture, it became sort of popular. It's crappy cartoon. I learned to be a cartoonist doing it. So I, you know, especially starting out is bad. I think the writing was decent, but the, car the art was not that good. And so I gradually got better as I went along. Some of the, the later ones were pretty good. But I learned to be a cartoonist in the spotlight while I'm, while I'm in a magazine. And it, it was kind of popular. And so somebody this week sent me a, an email and said, uh, I used to read your cartoon strip and I would like do you by any chance still have one that I, I'm using? I'm going to use it in a presentation. And I thought, oh, crap, man. Forgot about that. Yeah. And I thought I knew what she was talking about. So I went and dug up the cartoon. I found it, pulled it out, and I, I had a digital copy on my computer. And I sent it to her. And she was like, that's it. And so I was like, I, "What am I? I don't need this cartoon. It's it's, it's, it's sitting in a filing cabinet. It's thir the cartoon strip itself is thirty years old." So I said, "Send me your address. I'll send you the original." So I did <laughs> the original cartoon away. It's just taking up space. I have boxes of cartoons. When I was editorial cartoon, I have all of those. All the cartoon strips I've ever done. My, I got to get rid of crap. It's collecting. I just collect it. It's causing me uh, anxiety. Waking me up. 678-348-0008 is the listener line 
for this show. You can call and be a part of the show. You can talk about things if you want to. All right? Just I'm not going to go overboard. I'm just telling you that. You can text it, too. Don't have to call. Don't have to have your voice. If you want your voice on the podcast, just just call. Leave a message. That's all it is. It's a recording. It's just like an answering machine. You call, leave your message, say whatever you want. You can say, you suck, dude. I don't care. Don't say that. But you could say whatever you want, and I'll, I'll, I'll put it on the podcast. I'll make you famous. You can say your name if you want. You don't have to. If you don't want it to do any of that, but you still want to communicate with me, rick at apocalyptic.com. That's my email. And then uh, I'm on a lot of social media stuff, so you can contact me there. Um, I have developed a really bad habit that I want to talk about. And, and it's it's bothering me. It's something that's kind of happened over um, my life. All right. And it stems from my early days growing up, how I reacted to people. I'm not the most social person. I feel like I am, but I'm not. I don't really interact, but I feel like I do. <laughs> Does that make sense? I'm much more like I used to go to parties and people, I, people would come up and go, I'm sorry, you're not having a good time. And I'd be like, no, I'm having a great time. I love this. But I would, I go to parties and I kind of sit and watch what's going on. I'm just an observer. And I love that, watching people. And I'm having a great time. And people think that I'm kind of sitting there just feeling like I don't belong. And it's really the opposite. But that's kind of me. I just, I uh, socially, I don't tend to interact that much. At least it doesn't appear that I am. But I enjoy what's happening. I enjoy, I love people watching. But growing up, I would... I, I think, and this part of this is what I was taught. I was always taught to not disrespect people, especially grownups. No disrespect. You don't talk back to grownups. You don't contradict. My mother used to say, do not contradict me. Even if she was wrong, you can't tell her she's wrong. You just have to accept that. And, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing to teach a child to not contradict their parents, but... It, you start being raised with this thought or this feeling that if you see something wrong, you're not allowed to say anything about it. And so I grew up with that kind of thing where I just kind of allowed things to happen and I allowed things to happen around me. And I believe that it kind of affected relationships that I was in because you get into a relationship and your partner is uh, is doing something you don't like or that you don't agree with, or even that's just straight out wrong, for me anyway, I just tend to accept it. And not really accept it, but allow it to be while inside of myself, feeling like this is not right, feeling like I'm, I, I kind of disconnect from the person. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't talk about it. I was taught not to talk about it. I was taught just to kind of let it be, not say anything about it. And I think that's a very dangerous thing. And at some point, I started speaking up. I started saying, no, I don't want that in my life. I'm not going to allow that in my life. I'm going to say no. And so I did have some relationships where things happened, and I said no. And it didn't end well. <laughs> And I always thought that's weird because I'm finally standing up for myself and um, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm paying for it. But that is sort of what happens, right? But so I, I guess I learned that that's a good thing to, to say no sometimes, to say I won't stand for that. You know, this is a boundary I've created in my life and you cannot cross it. So I think... I've, I've noticed this thing about me recently, and this has not just happened recently. It's been happening for a long, uh, uh, quite a while, over 10 years, I'm sure. But it's not just me. I think it's our society, too. And that is, I've noticed that I, I have been pushing people out of my life when people don't um, behave properly. And I don't know if that's a good word, but I'll, I'll kind of clarify it here as I go along. 
But it, it happens a lot. You see it happen a lot in uh, social media, I think. It's real easy to just, you don't like what someone's saying or how they're acting. You can just unfriend them. Boop, out of the life. And I don't have a problem with that. So to me, my Facebook page, my Facebook world is my own world of my own building. It's not reality. It's it's where I like to go and just look at stuff. I like to hear what, funny things from people. I like to see their pictures, funny memes, interesting things. I, I You know, I just want to go and relax and read some, I don't know, just feedback from other people. I don't want to, I don't want to read arguing. I don't want fighting. I don't want negative people. And so when I start seeing a lot of that, I just delete it. Okay. I think we all do that. Just you're gone. Don't want to hear that. Don't want to read that. You're wrong. Boop, you're gone. But what that does is it starts building up this kind of um, reaction in your life where real people, when you encounter them and they're behaving in ways that you don't agree with, you just want to delete them. You just want to knock them out of your life. Get rid of them. And I've noticed I've started doing that and I don't think it's a good thing. Um, people politically who I don't agree with. I, I, I find that I will just kind of say, Boop, you're gone. You're out of my life. Don't need you. Um, on social media, it's one thing on in real life. I'm not so sure it's a good idea because you start, you, you, um, don't cultivate the skills you need to compromise. You don't cultivate the skills you need to get along with people who don't think like you do. You could build a world of people, like-minded people. And I don't know that that's what the world is about, but do you do that? I, I, I think we all have started doing that. I sense it all the time. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't set boundaries. And I'm not saying that toxic people should be allowed in your life. I don't, I don't agree with that. Just because, let's just say politically, someone thinks different from you. You can have them as a part of your life. You can have discussions with them. You can share the same space with them. Uh, you can have the same Thanksgiving <laughs> with them. But then there are some people who are toxic who might think differently and actually might be doing things to actively bring harm to you or your family. And I'm not saying that you should hang out with those people. Those people should not be a part of your life unless you just want them to be. But I think that that's fine to delete people like that. But I believe that for me, the trigger is becoming much softer does that make sense? I'm just kind of, I'm beginning just to go, boop, no, boop, you're gone. Boop, get out of here. In in life, I'm doing it. Not Facebook, not Twitter, just life trying to get rid of the, and what happens is in the end, th there's nobody standing. It's just you. And that's like incredible ego. No, you... <laughs> Even you're the only person that's there because you're the only person who thinks like you. So I'm not really sure how to change that, but I think it's something that's got to be changed. You know, I live in a a uh, part of the country where there's and, and a city where there's a lot of people thinking a lot of things and you have it, politically, you have conservatives, you have progressives, you have people who are so, uh, so progressive. I, I just don't understand what they're talking about. And I have people that I know people who are so uh, conservative that I don't, I don't, I can't relate, but that isn't that what it's about is trying to relate instead of having dialogue and understanding and even reaching a point where you could say, okay, I see what you're saying. I don't agree with it, but I see what you're saying. I just find that I'm cutting the cords. I'm just cutting them out and not even developing that skill to understand them. So for me personally, I just, I want to change that. I want to get in and I want to make that different. I got to figure out how to do it. 
I see it happening on social media, other people. And I know I've seen people on other people. So my friends, social media pages where I'm like, why do you let that jerk on your page? Why don't, why don't you delete <laughs> that friend? Because they're nasty. They're ugly. They're just rude. And I have such little tolerance for rude people. Like I can, I can tolerate disagreement. I can tolerate people who don't think or share the same point of view as me. I just can't tolerate people who are rude about it. And I don't know that I need to. I don't think rudeness should be tolerated. But I do think that I need to figure out ways to start understanding people more and relating to people who I um, disagree with. And this is a skill that I've lost. Somewhere along the way, I've lost that skill. I think society has too. And society can do whatever they want to do. But I've got to figure out a way to get it back. I don't know how to do it. I don't. I, I, there's a part of me that doesn't want to do it. So that's what makes it really difficult. But I feel like it's not a good thing. Is it? It can't be. There's too many people in the world who don't think like me. There's countries, uh, other countries where people don't even have the same thought patterns that I have. I can't delete everybody from my life. I have to learn to cope. I have to learn to be okay with things that I don't agree with. what I got to do. All right. I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to give you some uh, album reviews. I listened to a couple of Christmas albums. These are some albums, uh, just, just two. I'm going to do two albums reviews. Both of them, if I'm not mistaken, came out last year. So I like that little sound effect. Uh, in place of music. I do have some music, but I'm not going to play it. Um, Two albums. First of all, uh, what is the name of it here? Uh, it's an album from Amanda Shires. It's called For Christmas. Now, if you don't know who Amanda Shires is, uh, I would think that she's probably in the genre of country music, but probably better Americana, let's say. Maybe a little folk. Folk Americana with some country flavor. But now this album, I was really surprised when I first listened to it. And I played it in my art gallery for a, a, a lot last year. But she's got a voice very, very similar to Dolly Parton. So if you like Dolly, this is going to be for you. So I would say it's not what I would call a country album. It's an album that I feel like. So here's, here's what I would say about this album. There's no standards on it at all. You won't recognize any of the songs. And I love that. I like when artists kind of decide I'm going to write my own Christmas stuff instead of just doing something that everybody's been doing since the 40s. And I like those songs too, but it's nice when someone has the guts to do their own songs. So it's a very, it's what I would call, a, it's a very emotional uh, album, a very uh, honest album. There's some very... Um, interesting thing so because of this it's not what i would call a festive album it's a reflective it's something you would put on uh maybe when you got the lights dim you got some eggnog and you just want to sit and listen to some good music so i highly recommend it it's very atmospheric i'll let you decide if that's true but to me it is um and yeah, just give it a listen. See what you think. I don't think you're going to put it on to drive around unless um, unless you can really listen to the lyrics and, and get the feel of it. But there's a lot of songs about love and a lot of songs about memories and a lot of songs about hope and just fun. Christmas. But in a different way. So Amanda Shires. For Christmas is the name of the album. I believe it's uh, from last year. Easy to find if you got Apple or Spotify or whatever. Just grab it, listen to it. All right. Second album. Oh, man. Now, I've seen this one before. I kind of forgot about it. And then I believe it came out last year. And <laughs> I started listening to it this year. And I was like, holy crap. It is um, Happy Holidays by Billy Idol. Billy Idol. Christmas album. 
Everything I just said about Amanda Shire's album is untrue about Billy Idol's album. This is all, every bit of these songs are standards. Well, there are songs you could sing along with <laughs> if you want to. I don't know, man. You know, I, first of all, I would call myself a Billy Idol fan, but 80s Billy Idol, you know, Eyes Without a Face and Rebel Yell, Billy Idol. Yeah. Pumping fists, snarling. Spiky, bleached hair, Billy Idol, leather. But here's Billy Idol singing a uh, fun little chestnuts roasting by the open fire riding sleigh songs. And, um, oh, I don't know. It, it, it didn't work for me. I, and I here's what I was surprised at. Billy Idol's got a great voice. I didn't know this as much as I, I mean, I've heard him sing. But he's saying he sings Billy Idol, you know. I've never heard him actually sing other songs. He's got a decent voice. He can sing. So all of these sound like Billy Idol singing Christmas songs because that's what it is. But after a while, it kind of starts freaking you out. I mean, when he's singing White Christmas, I want him to sing White Wedding. It just... it. Can he just sing White Wedding Christmas? It doesn't work. It sounds like something's wrong. And then when he starts singing Christ the Savior is Born, Billy Idol singing about Christ, um, it, it seems something's wrong. I feel like, you know, back, um, a lot of times in Christian music, there's always uh, some like famous person who becomes a Christian and and then Christianity embraces them. And it doesn't matter if they make crappy albums, they'll act like it's the greatest album in the world because this person has become a Christian and they're one of us now. And that's what it seems. It just seems like a Billy Idol Christian album. And that didn't work for me when he's singing about round, young, uh, uh, round, young virgins, virgin. I guess there's only one of them. Uh, Billy Idol singing about a virgin. I, I didn't think I would ever hear it. Was it like in the Bible where Paul says every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess? I think Billy's just like, I'm going to go ahead and get mine in now. It doesn't work for me. Um, I, it's festive. It's not a horrible album it, by, at all. If you like Billy Idol, if you love Billy Idol, if you like Christmas music, you might love it. So to me, it was just kind of unoriginal. It's just Billy going through the... It's very karaoke. There's no soul in it, Billy. But it's okay. It's, you know, I'm going to give it. All right. So I'm going to rate both of these on a, um, ABCD kind of scale, right? So Amanda Shires, I'll give it, I'm going to give it an A. Um, it's just right in the middle of the A, not an A plus, not an A minus. It's an A good album. Enjoy it. Billy's album, I'm going to give a C. Uh, it's average. It's average. <laughs> if you like it, it's okay. Right, Billy? This is Billy Idol. Oh. I want to wish you a happy holiday. Thank you, Billy. A very merry new year. Oh, well, thank you, Billy. Um, that was Billy Idol. Happy holiday. You know, I think it was Rod Stewart that, that did a, an album of standards, and I couldn't take it. Of course, I don't like Rod Stewart, but... Um, it just didn't work for me. It seems weird, and that's what this seemed. But anyway, there's two albums, the, the the both sides of the spectrum, maybe. Neither of them horrible albums, um, but one you might like better than the other. So that's my album reviews. A for Amanda, C for Billy. Sorry, Billy, you didn't get a B, but um, there you go. I have here, and I told you I would do this, um, We'll do a, uh, do it really quick. No, let's don't. Let's don't. Let's stop right here. I'll do it next week. I'll do my little Christmas list next week because we're at 30 minutes and I said I would stop at 30 minutes. And that's good. It's a good show. We did a good show. Nothing to be ashamed of on this show. I would say uh, go give those albums a listen and, and let me know what you think. I want, I'm really dying to know what you think of these albums, both of them, especially Billy. Because you might not know Amanda, so you don't know what to expect. And I would say, listen to some of her personal albums, because some of them are just amazing. They're really good. Um, but we all know Billy. <laughs> we 
we're all kind of familiar with Billy. And to see hear Billy singing about um, how lovely are thy branches, uh, it's it's there's something surreal about it. And I I detect that he knows it. It's a bit tongue in cheek. I kind of think he's having fun with us. The album cover is a little kitschy. It's Billy in a little, I believe it's in a little Christmas sweater. And so I think Billy's in on the joke. And if he really is, I might, I might raise it up to a B just for that. But just overall, I'm going to give it a C. All right. Tell me what you think. Six, seven, eight, three, four, eight. Triple zero eight listener line. I want to hear from you. Love to hear from you. Uh, send me an email. I'm on Facebook. The shows for some reason are not coming up, uh, loading onto YouTube. There's a problem with it. I don't know. I tried to fix it. It's not doing things the way I want it to be done. Just going to eliminate it from my life. Boop, get rid of it. Doesn't agree with me. It's gone. Uh, but I do appreciate everybody who's been listening to the show. The numbers are are going up. I mean, you know, for a new podcast, it's okay. Not great. I don't hear from anyone. No one ever uh, lets me know if they're... Well, that's not true. A couple people did. And I appreciate it. But you can let me know what you think about it. And uh, let me know how it can improve. So we should have like, I think, one more... No, we got a couple more shows. Christmas, a couple weeks. Three more shows. We've got three weeks before the end of the year. So I can pump out a lot more uh, shows before 2023. I'm not looking. I've never liked years with odd numbers. I don't know why. It's a very OCD kind of thing. But I've always liked even number years. I can remember every time it's a year with a just, I don't know. I don't like three years. Does that make any sense? That's weird. I'm not even going to pretend like I didn't say that. Next year's going to be great. <laughs> All right. This is Billy. I'd like oh. to wish you a happy holiday and a very merry new year. Thank you, Billy. Um, Billy Idol, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate Billy being on the show. All right. I'll see you Thursday. We'll talk about death.